Today is August 22nd, 2014. This is Carol Garlow. I'm at the home of Bill and Marion Jones on Higgins Lake at 425A Clare Boulevard, right next to B&B Marina on the North Shore. And um, the first thing I need to do, uh, Mr. Jones, is have you state that this recording will belong to the Roscommon Area Historical Society. This recording will continue to belong to the Roscommon County Historical Society. Okay, thank you. So, we're here because this is such an interesting place because a number of years ago, Margaret Gilbert donated to the Historical Society several postcards that said Rockefeller's Resort. So they're in our Higgins Lake book, in our museum, but no one knew where Rockefeller's Resort was and it didn't really say on the postcards. So we met Mr. Jones earlier this year and it turns out that he knows all about it and is living in one of the uh, cottages from Rockefeller's Resort. So I'll let you tell us, Bill, about how what what you know of it and how it all started. Okay, I'm uh, Bill Jones. I'm from Bay City, Michigan. Uh, I'm 78 years old, and I've been coming up here to this resort since I was about two years old. The resort is part of the Evergreen Park subdivision up here on, <coughs> on North Higgins Lake, and uh, the information I'm sharing today is gleaned from the daughter of the original owner, Guy Samuel Rockefeller. Uh, to my knowledge, Guy Rockefeller was 43 years old when he bought uh, 175 feet of frontage up here for $175. This was in 1919. Uh, his property went back to a depth of 200 feet, and he and his wife Carolyn uh, built a homestead up here and lived up here until their death. Uh, he built six cottages, four on the lakefront and two off the lake, and lived up here and did uh, carpentry work as his uh, income. Uh, the cottages that he built, they uh, were starting, started renting them in about 1940. Uh, as an example, the one I'm living in was uh, rented for $30 a week, and that included a bathroom and a rowboat. Uh, Mr. Rockefeller also built some cabins reputedly at Westminster Camp. Uh, west of here. He raised his own chickens in a chicken coop on this property and had a root cellar that uh, was like a bomb shelter, part of it being underground where he kept his uh, foodstuffs for the winter. Uh, the pictures I furnished the Historical Society are from uh, a collection that I gained from the owner's daughter, Alberta Barber, and these Postcards were sent out to prospective renters with the uh, on, notated on the back what the uh, cottage included and the rental fee. Um, the families that came up here during the 40s and 50s when we rented, in, during July usually, were the same families every year from uh, Detroit and Chicago. So we grew up with the same kids uh, each year. Our days were spent in the woods or on the lake, uh, rowboating or fishing, swimming, uh, having bonfires at night, and a great deal of our time spent playing volleyball over the ropes that held the rowboats. <laughs> uh, there was only one phone during the early years, and Alberta Barber, the owner, had it and their telephone number I still remember as 70F11. Oh my gosh. Uh, Guy Rockefeller died on October 13, 1947 at age 70. 
His wife died uh, December 1st, 1947, also up here, and they were also buried in the nearby cemetery. Uh, Alberta Barber, the daughter, had to come and arrange the funerals for both of them on a train from Chicago where she lived. After Guy and his wife Carolyn died, the resort went to his daughter Alberta Barber and her brother Leslie. Um, subsequently, Alberta bought her brother Leslie out as he lived in Tucson, Arizona. Um, Alberta continued to rent the cottages out um, until about 1955 when she sold the first one next to her to my father, Bill Jones Sr. This is a cottage that's currently owned by my sister, Sharon Pike. Uh, I bought my cottages in 1972 and 1975 and these three cottages are still in our family. The other cottages in the resort have been sold and resold between three and five times to different uh, parties that are not connected with this resort. Alberta Barber died in Chicago on January 4th, 1983, and her surviving husband and uh, daughter named Georgine, uh, sold the family homestead the following year, 